Are you ready to get started on our whisk quilt? It's time for play. Hey everyone, Kristen Som here and it is time to get started with our We Whisk You a Merry Christmas quilt. So this is the one, it's by Kimberbell. It's a few years old, it's been retired, but we found some. Our sponsor is Your Best Friend's Quilt Shop. She is currently out of product and not planning on getting more, but if if you're in the Kristen Creates group on Facebook, I posted the prep video and on there I asked all of the shops that have any whisk supplies left over to add links and several did. So if you're still looking for supplies or any specific items, um, check that post in the Kristen Creates book on Facebook or group, sorry, on Facebook and you can find a shop that still has some supplies. All right, but our sponsor is uh, Your Best Friend's Quilt Shop and they did um, find a lot of the products and make a fabric kit for us and they shipped those all out. I actually have not received my box yet, but I already bought the kit. So I'm just, um, the thing that I need from her from our sponsor is any substitutions and it's supposed to be coming today but it's already almost four and I've waited as long as I can it's time to get us going so there may be a substitution on today's um, project and I don't know but I'll give you a little bit of information about that um, and I'll certainly share in the Facebook group hopefully you've joined that group there's a lot more information in there than I can put out onto YouTube so like I said, we're going to get started today. We're going to do this in a little bit different of an order only because I want to start with the quickest, easiest block today just to get you started. All right. So tomorrow or my next filming day will be a little bit of a stretch exercise. And so I didn't want to jump into that. And whenever we do a stretch exercise, it's always optional. I'll always tell you, you do you. If you want to give this a try, great. If you don't, that's okay. Here's another workaround, whatever. We'll, we'll do it all together. All right. So today, like I said, we're going to start on the easiest block. So on page, oh, I usually write the pages on my labels and I didn't. I just realized that. On page nine of our Kimberbell book that we wish you a Merry Christmas, we're going to do the sugar and spice block. All right. So if you made your packets, I've told you before, get the packets. It makes it so easy to have everything all prepped and ready. If you haven't done that yet, you can get the packets. It's a link from Amazon here. And whenever you click one of these affiliate links on Amazon that I point to or that are underneath the video, um, those help out the channel. So always try to buy items from the affiliate links on Amazon when you can to help out our Christian Creates tutorials. All right, so we're gonna start on the sugar and spice. So grab that block. Um, your packet is probably number three. It's really block three in the book. I did um, number the blocks, so, but we're not necessarily gonna work in order. Like I said, today we're gonna start easy. So there's a few reasons I wanna do that. So let's go over what we need for today. Um, and just a reminder, you're going to need your batting. I made a batting cut guide. I will add that in this video as well so that you can do a screenshot. And I added a PDF version in our Kristen Creates group that you can download and print out for your batting cuts. But every video, I will tell you, we're going to use this size, that size, whatever, all the information. So you don't have to prep if you don't want to, or you can prep everything ahead of time. And then for our stabilizer and the hoop, I'm using the Kimberbell Light Mesh Cutaway. And both of these items, the batting and the stabilizer, are still available from our sponsor. They don't have the fabric kits or the CDs or the thread or anything like that anymore. They sold out, but they do still have the stabilizers if you need that. So whenever possible, try to support our sponsor. All right, and I know a bunch of you did when um, we first announced this project. All right, so grab your packet, pull out the items from that packet, and very easy day. You can always tell it's an easy day when there's almost nothing in the packet. All right, very simple day. So on our fabric, it is this white with lots of Christmas color dots. That's the original one. I have the original one because like I said, I bought this years ago. I don't know at this point if our sponsor had this one or if there's a substitution. Um, once I get my package from her, I will add that information underneath this video if I know what substitute there is or if there is a substitute. Um, my assumption is it's going to be a white with maybe some sort of um, small decorative 
part to it like dots or, or maybe white on white I'm not sure but the original one is this white with multiple dots on it all right and we're gonna start with this if I recall it's eight and a half by eight and a half um, yep eight and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric now this one you want to make sure always back your um, main fabric with a fusible stabilizer I use the Kimberbell fusible backing and what I did is I cut it a quarter inch smaller. So I cut my um, stabilizer to eight by eight so that I can see the front from the back. This one's pretty obvious because of the dots, but sometimes not always. Some people have harder sight. And so this does make it easier to know the front from the back when you can see that stabilizer, all right? But you want to, some people, like I mentioned on the prep video, some people will prep all their fabrics. That's what I do. Um, and some will just do the background fabric. So if you're not big on using a lot of stabilizer, then definitely at least do your main fabric, all right? That's what's going to help keep you from getting any puckering. All right, so eight and a half by eight and a half for our main fabric backed with fusible stabilizer, all right? And then the only other thing that we have in this packet is our batting. So our batting on this one, our final cut size, if I recall, it's six and a half by six and a half. So that means that we want a piece of batting that is seven by seven, all right? seven by seven for your batting and like I said I made a batting cut guide so you can um, see each of the blocks on there so that you can prep ahead of time if you choose so seven by seven for your batting today all right and we will trim that down so if you haven't done this project with me before I'm going to show you every bit step by step we're going to do the quilting in the hoop um, so on the quilting there's five steps of the quilting so the first one is the placement of the batting so a t uh, we're going to do a placement stitch for the batting. We're going to put down our batting. And then the second step is to tack down that batting. And that's when we trim. And when we trim, then we're going to get our quarter inch seam allowance because step three is the placement of the main fabric. And that one is a quarter inch out from that batting. And so that's why there will be no batting in our seam. So make sure to follow that guide. All right. So step by step, and I'll show all of that in photos. And then step four is the tack down of the main fabric. And then step Step five is the actual quilting design. So if I've had this question before, I open up my quilting design and there's just one step. It's just the quilting. That means that you're working on the CBT version. All right. We're going to do the block by block where we're going to have the tack down of our batting, the tack down of our main fabric to help ward off puckers. So if you're noticing that that you only have that one step of the quilting, make sure that you're using the block by block method. It, when you purchase a quilting design from Kimberbell, it will have both, all right? There will be a CBT version and a BBB version, all right? Block by block versus CBT, which is generally the clear blue tiles, but it doesn't have to be the clear blue tiles. So either way, make sure you're using the block by block so that you get those five steps of the quilting. And I will show you step by step in photos now you're going to lay down your batting. Now you're going to tack down your batting. I will tell you all of that. All right. And speaking of our quilting design, so I was working in the background trying to possibly make a bundle of quilting designs for us, but it was last minute and Kimberbell at this point has not been able to do that for us. They're still um, possibly working on it for us, but we need to get started on this project. And so um, at this point, I'm just going to tell you the quilting designs that I'm going to use, and then you can purchase that one quilting design. If they do come out with a bundle, I will certainly tell you, but it may be too late for us. I'm not sure. And they did try. I'll tell you, they did try. Kim was super sweet about it. Um, very excited to do that for us, but it was hard. They have to create a roadmap to be able to, to do a bundle. So Anyway, at this point, there isn't a bundle available. I will add information if it turns out that they are able to do that for us. But for now, I'm just going to tell you which quilting design that I'm using. But keep in mind, you can use any quilting design. I will always tell you which size quilting. So on this one, so this one, we're going to do that sugar and spice block. It's the third block. It's on page nine for this one. I'm going to use quilting design and it is, which one did I decide on? 
um, hobby one. All right, hobby one. So if you go onto the Kimberbell website, make sure to use that link underneath this video that is an affiliate link for our sponsor, your, be your best friend's quilt shop. If you click on their affiliate link, it just takes you to Kimberbell. So it's no big part on, on your part. You're just clicking their link, but it gives a little kickback to our sponsor for you sh showing that you're supporting them. All right, because they jump through a lot of hoops to make this work project work for us. So click on that link that's underneath my video. It'll take you to Kimberbell. And from there, you can just in the search bar type Hobby One if you want to use the same quilting design that I'm going to use. So I'll tell you right now, Hobby One, it's the one, it's got scrolls with words on it like cookies and sugar and it's got a mixer and a whisk and a rolling pin and a spatula and a jar like a sugar jar. That is super cute and how perfect for this one that is sugar and spice, right? It's the block that we're doing is sugar and spice makes the holiday nice. That will be so fun with that quilting design. So that's the one I've chosen, Hobby One in a six by six quilting design, all right? So that means that any quilting design that you have that in your Kimberbell library of designs that you wanna do a six by six, so say that you did cup of chair, say that you're going to do jingle all the way with us. We're going to do that in a few months. So if you already have that quilting bundle, you can pick any quilting design that you like that you think would work well with this block and use that for your quilting design. Just make sure that you're using the six by six design. Easy, right? Totally, totally doable. Um, and like I said, I'm going to do hobby one. I think that one will be perfect for this. So you can choose to buy that design or you can use one from your library. Either way will work fine. So one other thing I want to mention on this. So it's a six by six quilting design. I will almost definitely use my eight by eight hoop. I love my eight by eight hoop. I actually use this one more than anything else. So I will use this one for my quilting today for the quilting and the embroidery, the block. So we, we do the quilting first. And another thing on that, so you can choose to, in fact, I think I'll do it on my machine on this first one just to show you. Um, so you would pull up the quilting design and click the add button on your machine and then um, add in the embroidery design. The embroidery design is that sugar and spice design. That would be on top. All right, so quilting first and then your embroidery design. You can do it that way or you, if you have embroidery software, you can merge them together in software. That's usually what I do, and then I just send it to my machine and it's all ready for me. Or the last option is you can do all of the quilting design. If your machine doesn't have an add button, you can do all of the quilting design and then load the embroidery design and it's automatically gonna be centered so you don't have to worry about that, but you would not take it out of the hoop and then just run your embroidery design. So easy peasy either way. So I wanna mention though, if you have, if you don't have a larger hoop, because this is a quilting, this quilting design is six by six, and I've mentioned this in lots of videos. If you have a six by 10 hoop as your biggest hoop, that six, six by six quilting design is actually not going to fit because it's really six and a half by six and a half. Because remember I mentioned those five quilting steps. Well, number three and number four are actually six and a half by six and a half because of that quarter inch seam allowance. So it will not fit in a six by 10 hoop. There are lots of workarounds though, all right? You can double hoop, you can do a four, if you have a five by seven hoop especially, then you would want to do a four by six quilting design and a two by six quilting design. Or the other option is you can, if you have embroidery software or if your machine allows it, you can take out steps three and four. So what steps three and four, remember I mentioned earlier, that is the placement of where you're going to put down your main fabric and the tack down of that, that main fabric. You can tack it down with uh, tape, okay? So it's not a requirement. It's definitely a nice to have, but if it's gonna keep you from um, being able to participate and not use your six by 10 hoop, if that's your biggest hoop, you can just take out steps three and four. Not a big deal, because you're just gonna center that main fabric over your batting anyway. So don't let that deter you. So normally I make a whole tutorial just for how to do a double hoop or what to do for a six by 10 hoop or what to do for an eight by 12 hoop. I'm not gonna do this that this time we're gonna jump in, but I will point you to um, a five by seven. So if in fact, you know what I'll do is if 
so when I go on to, on my computer, I don't know how to do it on my, on a phone. I'm not nearly as phone savvy as I, as I am on the computer. But if you go to Christian Creates on YouTube and in the little search bar that's within my channel, type five by seven, you'll see all the videos that I've done on how to double hoop or and how to take out steps three and four. So you know what I'll do is I will add a link here that is just a link to five by seven, that, that little search bar, the five by seven on my YouTube channel, and you'll see all the different videos. There's one for cup of cheer. There's one for spring showers. There's one for red, white, and bloom, pretty much all of them. So I've already done it a bunch of times. So I'm not going to redo it this time because we've already been quite delayed on this project. So we're going to go ahead and jump in. But if your biggest hoop is a five by seven, just watch one of those videos from the five by seven specifically. It's super easy to double hoop or to take out that step three and four. Okay. So don't let that deter you. All right. So I'm going to use my eight by eight hoop. We're going to do the block sugar and spice. Um, your batting cut, don't forget, is seven by seven. Your quilting design is six by six. I'm going to use Hobby One. You can use any six by six quilting design. I think that's about it. Um, one other thing is if you bought the um, the We Whisk You a Merry Christmas um, thread kit, notice that, so keep in mind, this is an older design. So on the newer designs from Kimberbell, they have these tiny little squares that show you, oh, you're going to use red, you're going to use green, and then you just try and figure out which one of those colors. This one doesn't even have that. So I will show you what I'm using, but I just want to point out that there's two reds in this thread kit and two greens in this thread kit, and they're pretty close. All right, so I may not be exact on what Kimberbell used in 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 their um, quilt. I, I don't know. It doesn't even say in the book. So don't stress over it. I will show you which ones I use. I will um, put a little note saying whether I use candy apple or um, raspberry, I think that says. So Either way, don't worry about it. So there's reds and greens that are very similar. The browns are pretty close too. So that there's a lot of, if you've got the thread kit, you're going to have exactly what I have. And underneath this video, I have a list of all of the different um, thread colors listed there as well. Or you can use ones from your stash. Okay. Either way is going to work fine. I think that's about it for now. So like I said, we're going to do the easiest one today just to get our feet wet and get started. Um, and then after that, we'll do a, a little bit of stretching, a little bit of modifications, a little bit of jumping in a little bit faster so that we can get more done. Um, just a reminder, as I mentioned on the prep video, I am going to be out um, from March 14th for a minimum of 10 days, 10 to 14 days. Like I won't be on the computer. I'm not allowed to hold my phone. I'm not allowed to type and text anything. So I will be out during that time. So all of that will be catch up time for you. So as I mentioned in the prep video, I'm going to start this week working a little bit hard, a little bit fast, but don't stress out about it. Don't worry. You're going to have a lot of catch up time. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started on our first block. Hey everyone, real quick, I forgot to mention that the design file, I already mentioned that the quilting design is a six by 10 and to refer back to a earlier tutorial for that, but the block itself is also a six by 10. So if you have a five by seven hoop, you're gonna want to do uh, two hoopings and there are there's a specific file, the, there's the one for the six by 10 or larger hoop, that's the one I'm gonna use, but for those with the five by seven hoop, there is um, a split design and there's directions specifically for that on the CD. All right, I hope that helps.
Okay, now that our first block is complete, I'm going to show you how I cut with the pop rollers. All right, we want our final cut size to be six and a half by six and a half, and I find that the pop rollers just make it so easy. But my biggest tip is I do it from the back. So remember, I took out my basting stitches. That's optional, but I like to do that because then I can very easily see my quarter inch seam allowance. That's why I do it that way. All right, so I put this down. I grab my pop roller. This is the square set, the six and a half by six and a half. And then I just use the batting from the back, okay? I'm on the back. Here's the front of our, our design. I'm doing it from the back. And from the back, I can easily see, I'm going to just move this around until I feel that it is with a quarter inch on each side. So a quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, quarter inch, all the way around, all right, until um, I can visualize that and I can see it so easily because of that batting, all right. So that's why I do it with the pop rollers this way. All right, and then if you haven't used the pop rollers before, if you're right-handed, it's easiest if you start on the left-hand side and you use these grooves. You just put it down into the grooves. Make sure you can see here. All right, and I'm just going to hold here, making sure your fingers are out of the way, of course, and down into this groove. Hopefully my hand's not in your way. And then just push against the side. Uh, you're pushing against the side of the pop roller and using your rotating cutting mat I'll add a link for this as well uh, for where you can get the rotating cut mat because that makes it super easy too and then again down into the groove and then just pushing against that side against that um, pop roller and then turn your rotating mat again and you're just doing this on each side so that you've got your quarter inch seam allowance all the way around all right and easy peasy what is the saying easy peasy lemon squeezy all right and look at that so there's our first block with our quarter inch seam allowance all the way around looks fantastic pretty exciting our first block is done playtime so excited i can't wait to see yours so after you complete your first block Share it in the Kristen Creates group and um, post it in the comments or in the group either way so that we can all see that everyone is getting done with their first block and then we know to move on to our next one. All right, now don't forget, I told you that I would love it if you would come up with a goal for the entire length of this project, whatever it is. There's so many opportunities. It can be um, keeping your craft room clean, organizing your craft supplies, getting up to date with your craft items like the, the projects. If you have old projects that you haven't completed, working on those. Um, eating healthy, getting more exercise, some more movement, um, building uh, muscle, weight training, um, getting out for walks every day, um, having stronger uh, friendships, like making time for your friends and getting together more often, pushing yourself in whatever way it can be, stretching yourself, um, pushing yourself to be the best you that you can be. So mine, I am going to try to inspire. I'm going to try to share little stories about my life that hopefully you'll find um, inspiring and um, maybe learn something because right we've all had these different experiences and and things that have made us who we are and things that we've learned from and so I need you to share with me I don't like talking about myself I don't like being in the spotlight that's one of the the stories that I will share um, this one I'm going to start with kind of a, a fun one <laughs> I don't know if I'd say it's fun but um, so I got my first road bike most of you know I love cycling like I have so much I'm going to show you up here so my bikes <laughs> I, I have bike stuff like everywhere in my craft room I love I love bicycles I love riding my bicycle it's it's my favorite thing to do I love embroidery love I love so many things that I love to do but 
cycling I, is my favorite. So on my 40th birthday, uh, my husband got me my first road bike. So my son was in Boy Scouts at the time. And the, it's kind of funny how I fell into cycling. I seem to fall into things like, hmm. anyway. Um, so my son was in Boy Scouts and he wanted to earn all the merit badges. He was determined. He got so many merit badges and one of them was cycling. And to do, to earn the cycling merit badge, you have to do several different steps. And the last one is to complete a 50 mile bike ride. He was like 10, I think at the time. And he had to complete a 50 mile bike ride. I had never done that. He had never done that. And so we got our bikes. We had these cheap bikes, didn't know about, um, the the uh, cycling shorts that have the pads in it that helps protect your bum. Um, we didn't know anything. I don't think we even knew how to um, pump a tire or, or to change a flat, I should say. I didn't know how to pump my tires. Anyway, so we go out on this ride and we've brought, I brought like tons of snacks. I think we had little fanny packs and, and all the things and we stopped. We I found this, we went on the Coyote Creek Trail in San Jose, which is about 25 miles. And so we just went all the way out and then all the way back and it counted as a 50 mile bike ride. And there's lots of little stopping points along the way. Um, it's, it's still, I'm getting a call. I don't know if it's going to end my... I'll say no to that. Hopefully it didn't interrupt that. So anyway, we're on the Coyote, Coyote Creek Trail and there's all these little rest points and we stopped at every single rest point. And you have to complete this, this 50 mile bike ride within eight hours. And I've got this 10 year old who's stopping and eating and like it, it took a long time. We were there all day for sure. So we're, we do this ride and and he finished it and I was so incredibly proud of him. And I ended up taking other scouts later to earn that badge and um, it all worked. But the funny thing is, is after that ride, my son was like, okay, I did it never again. Like he was not interested in cycling. He didn't want to ever do it again. He did great. He had a great attitude all day. We, we accomplished it. It was really awesome, but he never wanted to ride a bike again. He did for me, but but very little. Whereas I was like, that was fun. <laughs> right? I, I absolutely loved it. I was hooked. That was it for me. So after that, I wanted a road bike in the worst way. And so for my 40th birthday, my husband bought me a bike and it was pink. That year, Trek actually had a pink bicycle. It was so perfect. So, so for me, right? So I had this bike, I'm out riding by myself every single day. I'm riding out far distances and I signed up to do a 100 mile, my, my first ever century ride, a hundred mile bike ride. And I had signed up for it. And then from the time that I got my bike, the ride was five weeks away. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. I, I don't know if I can do this. And I don't know the area. So I'm really just riding on that trail like all the time. And at one point I'm out on that trail and I was gonna do a 75 mile ride to get ready for this 100 mile ride. So I'm doing this ride and I, I bonked. And I don't know if you've heard of bonking, but it's basically where all your electrolytes are just gone. You didn't eat enough, you didn't um, drink enough, you haven't taken care of your body well enough. And I'm riding by myself, I'm riding this bike and I'm like, oh my God, I'm like, I, everything was out of me. I had nothing left. And there's these vultures like flying over my head. And I'm like yelling up to them. I'm not dead yet. <laughs> like you can't eat me. I am not dead. So I finished this ride, but I learned so much from this. So I'm going to finish it with that. I'm going to tell you, I did the hundred mile bike ride, which was amazing. Absolutely amazing. I actually, my, my first hundred mile ride was, um, for MS and I, I raised a bunch of money for multiple school, school, multiple scoliosis. I'm sorry. I'm probably saying that wrong, but MS. And, um, the first day of the ride, it was a two day event. And the first day was a hundred miles. And the second day was a 50 miles. So it was 150 miles in two days. And that was my very first century. And I had a blast. Absolutely loved it. It was freezing, freezing cold, had a wonderful, wonderful time, but loved it. I was absolutely all in and my wonderful friend supported me on this whole ride and took a bunch of pictures and was just amazing. We had such a great time. So that was my first ever century ride and how I got into cycling and how I um, led up to building enough strength to be able to do that ride. I was going to tell you actually about my 200 mile ride, but I, I 
I think it was smarter to start with that one. So I'll tell you about my first 200 mile ride, which ended up with a big crash, but I'll tell you about that one next time. So don't forget to share with me something that you're working on for your goal, what you thought of my, my goal of trying to put myself out there. Oh boy, I don't like doing that. I don't know what it is. I, I don't like it. But anyway, I wanted to share that little story with you and how fun it was that, you know, it started with helping my son and, and here I am like, hooked. I love cycling. Absolutely love it. So how are you doing with your goal? We're just starting. So start strong. And my shirt today, I love this one. It's so warm and it's snowing today, actually. Oh my goodness. I went for a bike ride yesterday. It was beautiful and now it's snowing. <laughs> I know. So this sweater, it says, find joy in the journey. This is a uh, designs by Juju design. And I will add a link underneath the video. If you like the design, you can um, click that link and purchase from designs by Juju. The sweater itself is from Fred Meyer several years ago, but it's so warm and cozy. I love this one. It's a really fun design. And I love that you can personalize it with your own thread colors and so on. So if you're curious about my shirts, I will always try and share that information and there's always a link underneath the video in the video notes video description way down at the bottom there is information on where you can purchase the design hi everyone so i just wanted to very quickly show you how to find the links that are always underneath every video so very quick i'm sharing my screen here i just want to open up a web browser i use google chrome and keep in mind, I'm on my computer. It's different if you're using a phone or an iPad. So from a computer, it, you would just open up Christian Creates on YouTube. I have a link to it, but you can type in on, you can go to YouTube and then type in Christian Creates. So it brings you to my homepage and then on any video. All right, so like, let's see, here's our nativity stuffies that we did just recently. If I click on that link, you can see here is um, an ad at the moment, but then it's going to start playing um, the video. So here's the video that's telling us about the, um, the project. So underneath the video, whenever I say under the video or in the video notes, right underneath the video, you can see it says join in the fun in our group project in the Christian Creates group, or it'll say um, right here, click here to see links below the video. So when you click this more button, it shows you all of the links that are always under every single video. This will look a little different on my end because I'm the owner of this, but basically it tells you um, the project that we're working on right now with our coupon code, who our sponsor is, the direct links to be able to purchase from them. This one didn't include quilting, but it also will say, um, please use our affiliate link for our sponsor and there will be a link there and you just click on that and it takes you to Kimberbell directly. So let me open up one that had our quilting just so that you can see what I'm talking about. So here's Cup of Cheer that we did a couple of years ago or one year ago. So in here, so again, here's that, click here to see links below the video, click on that. And then you can see, here's the information about our sponsor. And then there's always a link right here. It says to order the cup of chair quilting design. So in this case, it will be to order the whisk you a Merry Christmas quilting designs. And then it will have the link to our sponsor for that project. So when you click on that, it just takes you to Kimberbell and then you would type from there in the search bar. So you could go to the search bar and what it does is it's putting a little cookie on your computer saying that you are supporting our sponsor. All right, and they get a little kickback from Kimberbell. So you definitely want to use their links whenever we do a group project. So you could type in Jingle or the name of a certain quilting design. So the We Whisk You a Merry Christmas does not have a quilting bundle, but I looked at it and I'm gonna probably use several different ones. Like if you look at Hobby One and Hobby Five, those are both baking supplies and I think that would be really cute for this quilt. Um, and then there's some from Cup of Cheer that we can use. If you used Cup of Cheer, you can use those. Really, you can use any quilting design you want, and I will tell you what size, and then you can choose whatever quilting design. There isn't a bundle, but I think it would be really fun to use some different ones. But on this jingle, because we are going to do jingle soon, um, we've got three projects that are scheduled, and it's the third one. So if you wanted to, you could buy the Jingle All The Way quilting bundle and we will use some of this for whisk and we'll use all of it for when we do our Jingle All The Way quilt.
but for this, notice this, this is the gray one is always the borders. And this would be a perfect border for our We Wish You a Merry Christmas. So I, I know I'm going to use that. So you could buy that separately. You could buy that. Um, it's called Christmas Border 3. And it's got the gingerbread and the holly leaves. And that would be super cute. Or like I said, if you're going to buy the bundle when we do Jingle, you could go ahead and get it now. And um, then we will use those. Both some of them in this project and some in the Jingle All the Way project, actually all of them for Jingle All the Way. But for uh, for We Wish You a Merry Christmas, we're going to use some different ones. And I will tell you each day, each each project or each block that we work on, I will tell you what quilting design I'm going to use. But again, you can use any one. And look at this one right here. See this one with the gingerbread and the peppermint and the candy canes? That would be really cute in this quilt as well. So anyway, I just wanted to show you how to find the links that are underneath the video. So when you're watching the video, here's the video, and then you just scroll down underneath, you click on that, click here to see links below the video, and there's always information here as far as our uh, coupon code, our, our who the affiliate, the direct link for the affiliate um, for Kimberbell, and then how to purchase the supplies, what supplies are needed, and then various information. And then I usually have what's coming up next and information on that one as well. So lots of information always underneath the video. There's also information on the shirt that I'm wearing in that video. And there's always a direct link or almost always. If I don't have one, I tell you that in underneath the, that video. But anyway, underneath the video, in the video notes, always lots of information. So I just wanted to share how to get to that. And again, this is on a computer. If you're on a phone... It depends. I think that there's like a little arrow over on the right and you click that and it shows all the information that's under the video. Um, an iPad is a little bit different as well. But anyway, so bottom line is I wanted to show you how to get information underneath the video because there's always direct links. And whenever I'm po pointing to a link, that's a direct link as well that you can get directly to our sponsor from that way as well. I hope this helps. <music>